80% of American homes are now locked down. So settle in, we're gonna look at why this is happening and what this means to you and to the real estate industry, homeowners are handcuffed. Also, it's why you're more likely to see homeless people in your state or in your city. This is critical stuff. Hi, I'm Keith Weinhold, Get Rich Education founder, Forbes Real Estate Council member, and 20-year real estate investor. I host the weekly Get Rich Education podcast. Make sure you're listening to that show. Listen on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or through the Get Rich Education mobile app. Most home borrowers have ultra low rate mortgages. They went artificially low, bottoming out below 3% back in January of 2021. That was like nonsensically low. And understandably, when you've got that low rate locked in, that makes homeowners reluctant to ever sell their property because they might have to replace it with one where they'd pay double the mortgage rate now. And this is what's known as the interest rate lock-in effect. And it's a big reason that the available supply of homes is almost frighteningly low today. It's like homeowners are handcuffed. Let's take a look at this together. The bright green area below are those that have a mortgage rate under 3%. That portion is 24% of mortgage homeowners. I mean, sheesh, they might never sell that home, keeping it locked in the family for generations to come if they could. And it's like that family is truly locked into that home with handcuffs. Next up, that turquoise colored area has three to 4% mortgage rates, and then going up are four to five, five to six, and finally, the dark orange at the top are mortgage holders with 6% plus rates. And in fact, over 80% of US mortgage homeowners have an interest rate below 5%. They're the people in the three green zones. Well, that fact keeps that property locked down when your rate's that low. And is it locked up or locked down or locked in? Or maybe it's locked out. I guess it could be any of those. But in any case, realize in the United States, when a home resells, the loan and the interest rate typically cannot transfer with that property. And that is what is called the mortgage due on sale clause. It originated in the 1970s. Well, why have a due on sale clause? One reason for this is that banks have to requalify the new borrower. See, if you're a borrower with good credit on your Wells Fargo loan and you sell your home to someone with shaky credit, well, Wells Fargo doesn't want to give the new homeowner the same favorable rates and terms that they had given to you. So though the mortgage due on sale clause is frustrating, it does make some sense. The only people selling right now are those that have to. Now, of course, the proportion of homeowners with ultra low rates, that's something that is going to drop over time. I mean, some are simply forced to sell based on moving to a new town or their life situation. And today's homeowners pay a rate well over 6%, the new buyers, which by the way, that is a historically below normal rate. Even if you pay a 7% rate today, that is close to average. In fact, as long as Freddie Mac began tracking mortgage rates in 1971, the average rate is about 7.5%. And of course, everything that we're discussing here are 30-year fixed rate mortgages on owner-occupied property. Now, the result of this lock-in effect is that 2023's supply of available homes has nosedive faster than a SpaceX rocket's rapid unscheduled disassembly as they call it now you might know that a six month supply of homes is what's deemed as a normal supply and demand market well look at the orange line here that's this year where we've gone from four and a half months of inventory in february to just 2.6 months today and then looking longer term here on this fred chart let's look back further this is a chart i've referenced in other videos but let's update it one and a half million homes are what's normally available going back before 2018. And today it's just about 600,000 units for sale. That is an astounding 60% drop. It's like the supply of homes has fallen and it just can't get up again. New listings and total listings of homes for sale have both dropped to their lowest level on record for this time of year. Right now, lowest 
ever. And in some markets, this makes resale properties seem as scarce as the rare earth element yttrium. Well, sadly, this contributes to homelessness. When there aren't enough houses, those on the lower economic rungs of society become vagrants and the vagrancy pool has increases in it. There are more of those people due to this short supply of homes. Things like 3D printed homes and shipping container homes, they don't seem to be the answer anytime soon. I've done entire shows on those exact topics. Relaxing of zoning requirements, okay, that can get more builders to build sooner, but even with cooperation there, it's going to take years and years to get us back to a supply demand balance. Now, if mortgage rates though, if they come down a lot, that can get some homeowners to put their inventory on the market. I mean, then they could say, sell their 4% mortgage rate home and replace it with another 4% mortgage rate home. But few people think that that's going to happen anytime soon. Since last November, mortgage rates have stayed in this really tight range. Few think that mortgage rates are going to drop below 6% by year end and because higher rates have hurt affordability that means that more people then must stay as renters they can't be first-time home buyers fewer home buyers then means more renters so if you're a real estate investor will this paltry supply this paucity of supply of these resale properties and an ample and growing supply of renters, you know, one option for you is to purchase brand new income properties. And in the industry, these are what are known as build to rent properties. You're buying a tangible asset that's inflation advantaged. And those market and demographic factors like an American housing shortage and more people that have to rent, I mean, these are factors that might be intact for an entire decade or more. And in fact, one thing that we do here, a core thing at GRE, is that we can help you with completely free investment coaching at GREmarketplace.com slash coach. Yeah, if you think you're ready to add income property to your portfolio, Naresh or Andrea, what they do is they learn your goals, they find you the best off-market deals nationwide, they find you the property provider that has incentives. One provider recently offered 4.75% interest rates. They bought your rate down for you. Another provider offered you free property management for one year. And our coaches will help write your offer if you would like that. They'll help you submit your earnest money, navigate the inspection, interpret your appraisal, check your management agreement, and just overall ensure a smooth closing day for you. And your investment coach can do more than this, or if you prefer, they can do less than this. And here at GRE, we can do all of this because of our relationships in GRE Marketplace, that's where the coaches source the properties, and it's really more like an organic farmer's market than a big box store. Property offerings change frequently, and because there are limited slots available to talk with our coaches through the phone or through Zoom, it helps if you've got your down payment and you are ready to go. It really helps if you're pre-approved from your lender for that property. I mean, sheesh, if it were any easier, our coaches would even make your down payment for you. <laughs> So this really ought to help you. And did I mention that it's completely free? So to get started, choose your coach and book a time. I think you'll find it valuable. Start at gremarketplace.com slash coach. I'm Keith Weinhold. I'll see you in the next video.